This is just a regular public bus. Why are the seats so nice? I filmed this video together with my friend Chicagoland Transit. Make sure to check out his channel as well. Chicago is a city with over 2.5 million people living in it. For American standards, it's widely regarded as having a good transit system. Sure, the CTA has a multitude of issues, but at least it exists, right? But Chicago does not stand alone. It is surrounded by suburbs on its northern, western, and southern sides. And these suburbs are also connected to transit, albeit with a much less dense network. Metro provides train service between downtown and the suburbs, while Pace is the bus operator in the suburbs. I'm a city guy at heart, but during my time in Chicago I have really enjoyed taking these two and exploring the northern, western, and southern suburbs as well. If the eastern suburbs existed, you'd have to explore them in a submersible, which doesn't really sound like a good idea right now. Today's video is about Pace, the suburban bus operator. In the early 1980s, bus service was provided by many different operators throughout the region. They were all consolidated into Pace, a division of the Regional Transportation Authority, an agency of the state of Illinois. It's pretty convenient since all buses in the Chicagoland area share a numbering system and transit passes are valid on both Pace and the CTA. I would further divide Pace into three categories. These are my categories and not official divisions. There are city buses, which provide local service in the larger suburban cities like Elgin, Aurora, or Joliet. Then there are the regular buses that just use regular streets. These run every 15 minutes or, you know, twice a day, and everything in between. And then there's the Highway Express buses. These run long distances with few stops, and as their name suggests, they run over the interstate highway system. What's more, they actually have permission to run on the shoulder. I mean, flex lanes. I mean, well, on I-90 they're called flex lanes, on the other highways they are just regular shoulders. If traffic is going slower than 35 miles per hour, the bus driver can move onto the flex lane at a slow and safe speed, of course. But this little bit of priority does help the bus's on-time performance. Wait a minute, is this BRT? But then what is this? Today we're riding Route 603 from Rosemont to Elgin. This route uses I-90, also known as the Jane Addams Tollway, with only two intermediate stops. I'm going to show you why these buses are so popular. It is early May and it is really chilly outside. It even snowed yesterday, so uh, definitely we'll be looking for something comfortable today. Let's try a bus. Now I know what you're thinking. Buses are not the first thing that come up in your mind when you think of comfort. So let's get on a blue line train to Rosemont where we'll ride a bus that might just challenge those presuppositions. And that's our bus over there. We're gonna be taking the 603 to Elgin. To be more specific, this is an access bus built by the Eldorado National Company. Pace actually has a ton of these, but they normally look like this. Notice that there's some differences between our bus and the regular Eldorado. The normal model has a front and back door. Our bus only has a front door and it's a giant single leaf glass door. Second, while the windows on the regular bus are encircled with metal, the windows on our bus today are a uniform black shape. The interior is even more different, but first let's pay for our ride. These are the seats on a regular Pace bus, and these are our seats today. That's right, this is a regular looking public bus on the outside, but on the inside we get to relax in the comfort of a luxurious coach seat. Not only are they extremely well padded, these seats recline as well. There are air vents and reading lights in the ceiling, 
and you can stow baggage in these overhead racks, which are also very rare for transit buses. The luggage racks towards the front of the bus are larger than the ones in the back. And we're off! During the midday, Route 603 only runs once an hour. It'll take about 40 minutes to reach Elgin. Our bus maneuvers out of Rosemont Station, and pretty soon we've made it onto the Jane Addams Tollway. There's no traffic today, so we don't have to use the flex lanes. We're just cruising. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and check out our Patreon as well. So the I-90 Express is actually the slightly redemptive conclusion to a depressing history. People have wanted an extra connection between Chicago and some of the northwest suburbs for a long time. As somebody who had to make this commute regularly, the first plan would have had my vote. The blue line would be extended west from O'Hare and terminate in Schaumburg. I am not exaggerating, this would have shaved an entire hour off of my commute to work, had this happened. But soon attention shifted to Metra, who was planning their Star Line. This line was going to start in Rosemont and use diesel multiple units to make a ring around the suburbs. This plan actually got farther, until it was time to apply for federal funding. Wouldn't you know it, the federal government hasn't been very generous towards Chicago transit projects in recent years. So with that shelved, in 2016, Pace finally launched their express bus service between Rosemont, Schaumburg, and Elgin. And it's been a hit! Rosemont is one of the busiest stations on the L because so many people transfer between the bus and the train. Ridership on the I-90 Express is high, and I think the fact that it just costs $2 like a regular bus helps with that. A few rows behind us, a gentleman had his feet up on the seat. He was listening to TikToks loudly, throwing trash from his snacks on the floor, and rolling up a smoke for later. Halfway through the trip, I moved one row back to get a different angle for my video. This person then told me to move back to my old seat because me recording was making him uncomfortable. Of course, I moved back. You guys know me. I would never want my subtle, lawful actions to bother somebody who's just trying to trash a public place. What kind of monster would that make me? We're approaching our first intermediate station, Barrington Road, in the village of Hoffman Estates. This station is interesting because it was built right next to the highway in the middle of a toll plaza. Though the bus stops themselves are pretty much just a regular shack with a sign, both sides of the highway are connected by a pedestrian overpass. I considered getting off the bus here to film this place, but since the next bus to Elgin wasn't for another hour, I didn't really want to spend that hour next to a loud highway when I thought that it might only take a few minutes to film the station. So here's an aerial view of the station that I got from Google Earth. At Illinois Road 25, we leave the interstate. From this station to downtown, we will just be using the regular city streets of Elgin, but without stopping. like that the bus station is right next to the Fox River over here and for added convenience it's also right next to the metro station we'll actually be taking metro back to Chicago in about an hour so the ride on the 603 it was about 35 minutes those seats were so comfortable the current Elgin Transportation Center opened in 2016 it is conveniently located next to the train station and just across the river from downtown it is a very popular station for transit fans because of its location right next to the Fox River, but also because all buses arrive and leave at the same time. Though I have to say, the bi-directional running within the narrow terminal seemed a little bit chaotic to me, not to mention slightly unsafe. Elgin is the sixth largest city in Illinois, with a population of 114,000. 
Unfortunately, its founding is unmistakably tied to the violent removal of the indigenous people who lived in the area before the 1830s. When white people began to settle here, it first became a dairy town before switching over to watchmaking. It was America's largest watchmaking city until the 1960s. In fact, the reason why the clocks outside of Chicago Union Station say Elgin on them is because they were advertisements for the Elgin Watchmaking Company. How's that for a fun fact? Anyways, if you ever find yourself needing to go to Elgin, I highly recommend the Pace I-90 Express. Thanks for watching. See you next time.